Okay, we're here. Just opening up right now. People are coming shortly. The daughter's coming here, so. Actually, the lineup is very little lineup out there, considering for public show. Showing that the economy is getting tough right now. Oh yeah, that's tough. Yeah. Yeah, well that's okay. okay Still made so in time. A lot of people today at the show, way more than the early birds. But uh, we're gonna go up here a little bit. Just want to show you the amount of people. All the aisles are basically full. A lot of people today. I've been selling a lot of things, but no big money. But maybe 150 bucks so far. But if I can sell, I have a friend that put some stuff aside. He might be interested in a couple windows. We'll see. There's a lot of people. Okay, so I, I sold quite a few little things here and there, but no big tickets, but it wasn't too bad so far. So, I sold lots of cars that were in boxes, but these ones are left. Um, so, We'll walk around a little bit here. Some, something for everybody, basically.
here with my Bill buddy uh, Bill Wilson. How you doing, Bill? Oh, hi, Bill. Nice to see you again. Okay, so Bill is actually uh, an author of all these books here. Uh, he's researched for years and years. That's basically I call the Bible because that's his first first book, right? Yep. First okay. book. It's all on Pioneer Soda Water uh, factories and ginger beers, soda pops, oh, siphons. It's got a little bit of everything history. That's your first book, Bill. What's your next book that you that you wrote? Well, we did the beer, the BC Beer Barons, all about the breweries in BC. Okay. Uh, and uh, that was uh, uh, kind of fun because it had uh, a complete listing all the way back to the 1850s, right up to 2011. Then this one was where I started the Soda King series, Volume One, Volume Two, and Volume Three. So these are all different books. Yep. Okay. So this is uh, Soda Kings about the soda pioneer, uh, soda bottlers in Victoria. This one's uh, the bottlers in New Westminster in the Fraser Valley. Okay. And then this one's about the famous Thorpe & Company where you get uh, all the Thorpe. It was the largest pop company in the early days of the province. So how many embossed bottles do you think they had, Thorpe, Thorpe & Company? Oh, you know, they're mostly in there. I would say there's at least 50 or 60 anyway. Okay. And they started how early? Uh, they, start, they came to uh, BC in 1889. They started the company in 1889. So 1889 and... When did they actually phase out their uh, uh, embossed bottles? Uh, embossed bottles uh, ended in uh, the early 30s. 30s, okay. Yeah. Then it went into ACL painted labels, right? No, I'm including those. Oh, okay, ones. so yeah. okay, so the, the, the yeah. uh, handmade bottles kind of ended about 1920. Okay, 1920. Yeah. Okay. So you had a really big ginger beer collection all the time. Yeah, I had 82. 82. Uh, uh, BC ginger beers and uh, uh, eventually uh, sold off most of them and uh, kept the ones that I dug. Oh, so you kept a few? Yeah. Okay, so that's good. Like I had a big collection myself and... Um, the biggest. I, I had a big ginger beer collection, a soda pop collection. Yep. And I uh, ended up selling everything because I thought prices got so high. Like it, my limit was five hundred dollars a bottle, yep. and they were going like thousand, fifty hundred, two thousand, three thousand. They were going ridiculous. So yep. I said, no, the hobby is not. I enjoy the bottles, right? I still kick myself, but you know, I was going to ask you um, on this book here. How long did it take you to do the research on that book, the first book that you ever did? I wrote it in high school. Uh, oh, okay. So I started writing in high school, and I published it in 1986. 80, 86? Yeah, so it would have been 74 to 86 to get wow, it Wow, so a lot of history. Yeah. And then that was your next book? That one only took three years. Three years, okay. Yeah, and this one uh, was only a year. And uh, then uh, this one was, uh, so this was 2019, this was 2021, and this one took me three years. Uh, but, you know, that was just to write it. And I actually started working on the research on that one in 2005, okay. so you can call it 20 years, really. So like you're saying, uh, these are all for sale, yep. right? Um, how are people able to get these books from you? You get them through my uh, website, BC Antique Bottles. So BC Antique Bottles? Yeah, just do a Google search. And okay, would it be CA or .com? It's both. Oh, okay, so... Yep. You just type it in on Google search, you'll find it. Okay, so BC Antique Bottles. Yep. Um, like I said, printing cost is really high on these bottles, and they're very limited run. Yeah, you tell me uh, they're so very little limited. I, the first book, I ran three thousand copies. That was a huge mistake. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> then this one was five hundred copies. That was still too many. Yeah. This one was one hundred copies. That's like the Goldilocks size, right? Just yeah, right. Yeah. This one was uh, another hundred copies. This one is going to be a popular one because there's so many bottles from this company, so I ran 200 copies. Okay, good, yeah. yeah. So, awesome. Um, I'm glad you, uh, I was here to see you again. Yeah, it was nice to see you too. Bill. So, I know, I know you for, I would say, about 30 years at least. Yeah, and I've always admired you yeah. as one of the great diggers in BC. Oh, I mean, I put my, <laughs> that's a lot of dirt we had to move all those years, right? Yeah, you but were I, a great digger. I found, like, I found the bear, I found um, yep. a green, green Cross, Downey Park, Graham's. Yep. Um, so yeah, I, not, I found my share of rare bottles over the years. There's not very many bottles that you yeah. didn't dig. And yeah. I remember the, the, like it was yesterday, going to your sales table at this very show and seeing a, 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 like half a dozen Cali ginger beers all oh, yeah. lined up. And I bought one of them and I still have it today. Well, the story of Cali, right? There was not, how many were known before that? Oh, like, three or four? Yeah. So then when they, they started tearing the pop factory down, so some turned out. Yeah. But I got this on a different location. I remember one night I was going... It was actually a company I worked for, and I was the only guy in there, and we were digging, and uh, they were just coming out left and right, and we were digging. Uh, I dug my um, a bear, yeah. 
which is super rare. There, what, what, what's a bear worth right now? The standing well, sold, bear. When I sold mine uh, uh, back in the uh, many years ago, I got uh, I think it was 2014. I sold it. I got four grand for it. Four thousand, but they peaked at five thousand at one time. Yeah. I'm not sure what they are worth today, but yeah. I got one in excellent condition. I got one off the factory. I yeah. brought it off the machine operator. Yeah. I think I paid like two fifty for it. Oh wow! Yeah, that's a years ago, right? The glass cross. I dug it. That where'd one you, went to the where'd U.S. You, where'd you dig it? Uh, workyards. The what? City workyards. Oh really? You yeah. got one there, eh? Yeah, that went for um, I think three hundred U.S. Oh wow! The guy collects glass, glass ginger beers. Yeah all around the world yeah he approached me and i said you'll never get one but evidently he did he got one yeah had a little flea bite inside like a like an oyster yeah he said perfect condition it was a mint bottle but it was just something with yeah. internal thread not chipped out or nothing but it was not mint but yeah. it was still really good he was super happy yeah really He's, really hard to get that one yeah so he went somewhere in the states maybe ohio possibly but yeah I brings back contacting me. yeah it brings a lot of memories here um so what do you think the future of these bottles? What's your opinion about? Well, you know, where's the where's the height limit? Like, is it going to go higher? Well, or like, there's an we, what, what we're fond of saying is there's an ever decreasing number of collectors paying an ever increasing price for bottles. It's like the people that are left are play, they want to get it before they're gone, right? It seems yeah, like you're saying that everybody to show here is average 60, 70, 80, right? But it gives me hard yeah. though, Phil. I tell you, uh, you probably saw that. that yeah, yeah, I that see the youngster there, 14 yeah. years old. He's just starting out, and I, I hooked him up with a guy here in Newestminster who's about the same age. The two young guys, they're going to be the future of the hobby. It's not dead yet. It's yeah. just we got to really work what, on what, what those kind of kills the bottle hobby is if you can dig bottles every day, yeah. it brings people interested Absolutely. in. When the digging sites are gone, you don't have these collectors that are picking the bottles up and buying the good bottles. Yeah. Or it's not there. In, in the States, they have outhouses and trash pits. Here, it's um, areas that are developed already, long yeah. gone, right? So, yeah. but, but it's, you know, it's an I see awesome those young hobby. Guys still there, and it's not, you know, we got a challenge to keep the hobby going, but with those young guys still around and, and look, deciding to do it, it's just a matter of us trying to promote these kids to carry on and do it. Yeah, because there's a, lot a of there's a lot of bottles that are ten, twenty, thirty dollars, you know, yeah. but the, the the rare ones are five hundred bucks, yeah. fifteen hundred, two thousand, yeah. yeah. especially uh, colored siphons oh. went ridiculous. They yeah. got they were like three, four hundred dollars. Now they're like two thousand, three thousand, right? So uh, that's a dual enclosure. It had a, a marble and internal thread. I had that bottle before. Yeah, that's a hard one. Right? Yeah. Oh, I had a lot of rare stuff. I had um, hundred, about hundred, over hundred pieces. Bjorn bought right. I remember he bought the deal. Everything, uh, it was, uh, I wrote about it in one of my books. Yeah, it was like 7,000 that yeah. I got. I got around 7,000. I got 15,000 from my gingerbread collection. Yeah, yeah. Right, and that time prices weren't like today. Yeah. That collection is probably worth 25,000 today. Yeah. But you're talking about 15 years of money. You know, the money just turned turned to nothing, to be honest. Yeah. Devalued. Okay, Bill, I, I appreciate you uh, having uh, spending a few minutes with me. Oh, it was enjoyable. You know, yeah. and, uh, as I said, Bill, you're a digging legend, so uh, well, you know, what do I say? Hard work and hard labor. Hey, Bill, thank you. you. Good to see you So again. this is Bill Wilson. Uh, he's the author of all these books here. Pioneer Soda Water Companies of BC, Beer Barons of BC, Soda Kings of BC and Yukon, Soda Kings of BC Yukon, Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3. Yeah. So where, where can you find your book? BC Antique Bottles. BC Antique Bottles. Just do a Google search. Yeah, type that in there. It's Bill Wilson's the author. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bill. Cheers. You have a great day. You Thanks bet. for your okay, time. So we got just over an hour left here. So that's what left here so far. Still quite a bit of stuff. None of this stuff went. So. No. <laughs> well, I sold stuff out of that suitcase quite a bit already. A uh, Disneyland thing got sold. A bunch of the German passports are gone. All that stuff on a suitcase that I kept, most of it went. All that stuff the cave went. Um, I'd say I probably got $50 out of suitcase paper I sold. I was approaching about 1000 only, which is not that great. But, you know, I, I do it for the club because I'm a club member, right? So, but anyways, like I say, uh, I've done like 1500 2000 on the first day, so... That's okay, I don't okay, the show's over here, so we made a grand total of $1,113.50. So we did, we sold quite a bit of stuff, but uh, nothing like before, but still happy. We got uh, most of the stuff on the top. 
I might have, might have a garage sale, so you may just put some of the stuff in a garage sale, and then, and then figure it later about that. So, what do you think, Melissa? Was it great? Okay. You happy? Yeah. Family, family time, right? But the show was good. I didn't buy nothing, nothing at all. So, um, like this, this bottle here is about uh, you know twenty five dollars in aluminum alone, right? So, a lot of things I might scrap. But, anyways, uh, that's my spread so far. Still a lot of stuff, but. Sometimes when you get too much stuff, you know, you, it's hard to sell too because the people get confused, they can't see everything. They look at one thing and then their eyes stray to something else and they forget about the thing they want. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is the Fraser Valley Antics and Collectibles Club 2024. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Have a great day. Okay, so I ended up selling those two windows to my buddy. I gave him a, a super, super deal for $200. So our grand total is uh, 13, ah, perfect, 13, 13, 50. Okay guys, that's it, update on that. I just went to my buddy, so I appreciate him, him appreciating it, but I had him for over 25 years, so not, they look good in my window, but my new house I renovated, it's not gonna suit what I, for the layout I get in the designs and all that. Okay.